All right, guys, this is an update of the megawatt hour power pack that we're building. I'm right in the middle of this and I've been really busy engineering the whole thing and that's why I haven't been made videos, right? But here it is, look. Essentially, we're gonna get about 10 of these racks. Not this exact rack, so I've been thinking they're gonna be a little bit bigger. Uh, and I'm gonna put 100 kilowatt hours of these LG uh, cells in there and then each one is gonna be 100 kilowatts times 10, it's gonna be my megawatt hour path so originally what we were gonna do you guys know me I'm a bit of a hack I want to use stuff that's you know that's in the shelf and what I was gonna do is gonna use you know a bunch of these little 4.4 kilowatt hour I mean kilowatt uh, magna sign inverters right those are 48 volt inverters these are 60 volt modules, right? And so I did the test, I read the manual and it could handle the 65 volts that this one fully charged uh, can put out, right? And so what I was gonna do, I was just gonna parallel this entire array of batteries here, right? So it essentially becomes one 60 volt battery. Uh, you know, this is like 75 kilowatt hours or something like that. Um, and then I was gonna run those in parallel and we were gonna run a bunch of the circuits here that I run at 110 and 220 volts, right? And it's pretty cool because you don't have to ask permission. This is essentially a backup uh, system, right? And so when, when you have a backup system, you don't, you don't have to get it permitted and stuff. And so it, it's simple in that way. And you know, we could build it and scale it up. And, and that was the, the, the idea, right? That was right up until the point that I talked to an engineer that actually installs power packs for a living, right? And so once I, you know, described the whole system to him, then he's like, yeah, that could work and there's benefits to it. And he goes, the, the problem is that in a building like this, when, it, when the power comes into a building, it's like at 480 volts and then it trickles down to lower voltages and this system would work at the lowest tier. And so essentially we could, would only be able to power like with the plugs, the computers, everything that's 110 and 240, but they don't really have a lot of the 240 stuff here, right? So basically we would only be able to power the 110 stuff. And so once we started talking to him and he demystified the whole, like the way that Tesla does the, the, the real Tesla power walls, right? And so once we looked at the, to that system and we looked at the schemes that they used to to save money and to generate income using the utilities and the programs that utilities use and stuff then it became pretty clear that it had a lot of advantages the only real downside it was the cost of the system to get a big inverter the ones that we saw in that video a few weeks ago uh it's the cost right it's like fifty thousand plus for that 100 kilowatt inverter and stuff but then we kind of looked online to see if there was like a second hand, like a used one that we can find. And we did find one that was a one fifth the cost of the new equipment. And so at that point, it became very clear that the pros outweigh the cons. Now we have to re-engineer this pack. Now we're not going to make one big giant battery pack that is 60 volts. Now what we're going to do is we're going to run this configuration here. This is a new configuration and it's essentially six of these modules in series, uh, 60, you know, times six or whatever. It's a 355 volt nominal. It's about 400 volts fully charged. I'm going to uh, fuse them here at the, at the middle of the pack. And then this is going to be plus and negative. And then those are going to be parallel to, you know, I don't know, four or five, six of these. Uh, and so that is going to be running the main 100 kilowatt inverter. That's going to be connected right where the power comes in into this building. And that's all going to be permitted and it's going to be inspected and designed by, you know, the proper engineers and stuff. And uh, these guys are going to be able to run this whole facility, you know, properly. And they're going to be able to use like all the incentives that, you know, the local utilities and the states and all that stuff use. And we'll go into detail into those in, in, in another video, but there are quite a bit of 
revenue streams that you can get using a system like this. No one really has a megawatt hour battery pack in the facility. I mean, there are people that are buying uh, or leasing these Tesla power packs and stuff, and they're spending quite a bit of money. This We're doing this literally a fraction of the cost uh, for what these guys are, are using, right? And this is, um, you know, just to show you guys that this, this is in the future, this is coming. Uh, cheap batteries, you know, secondhand batteries, recycled, reclaimed, reused, recertified, redeployed, you, well, however it is that you wanna call that, it, this is a part of the future and this is the beginning here. Um, this is gonna be uh, maybe the first privately made, designed and deployed megawatt power wall, right? Or power pack or whatever. Um, and so that's what I'm doing right now. Um, we're getting to the stages where I'm designing all this stuff and then once I nail down the design and all the cabling and all the equipment, then I'll be able to, all those of you guys that sign up for my, uh, you know, my sheet to come and help me, I'm gonna be calling you guys. And this is gonna happen pretty soon, right? And so if you guys are ready for that, I'm gonna be like, hey, can you show up and help me build all these packs? Uh, and we'll just slap them together, you know, screw them together. We'll test this, the the modules. There's gonna be a thing where I have to balance all these modules, right? Because it's a lot of energy, and you know, sometimes like this one is it'll be like at 60 volts. This one will be at 56 volts. There's there's a difference there voltage. So we have to transfer some of that energy here. Eventually, when I connect all these into parallel to be able to run this building, they all have to be you know you know fairly balanced and stuff. And of course. Uh, I am going to be exploring a BMS system because this has to be a legit system. This will not fly, you know, a thing. It's, it has to be standalone and it has to be a, a system that alerts you of any fault, any condition that is not right or there's some concern and stuff. And so this is going to be a legit system and I'm happy to be, you know, part of it. And so that's what I'm doing. Um, Thank you for watching this video. I hope that at the very least inspires you, right? I'm a nobody. I don't know anything. I'm just, uh, I'm driven to be part of like projects like this. And uh, I'm, it's, it's, you're gonna be able to do it because this is gonna become the norm. Batteries is the thing that is gonna be driving the future. There's gonna be, you know, the grid is gonna be segmented into little buildings like this everywhere. And it's gonna ha start happening here in America. But I think wherever you're watching this from, I think eventually it's going to get to you. And so the future is pretty bright. Stay tuned to the channel because uh, there's going to be more and more updates on this project. All right, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs> this... That's one of the cells. That's one of the cells. That's one of the cells. And this piece here costs about 60 cents. Yeah. And that piece is about 20 cents. 16 in one pack. In one pack. How many of these cells are in one car? Uh, 96. 96. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at 20 cents, 40 cents, uh, all together under $2 for all this. And then this here is just a recycled battery, right? And then. Oh, oh, there, there we go. Is. And this unit came from, this is the LG Chem Cell Pack, right? How many, how many watt hours is this one cell? 166. 166 watt hours. This is one watt. So that it can be on for 166 hours. So, Actually, yeah, one watt per hour, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we could leave this on like this for 166 hours. Yeah. And then this one unit here, we put it to this. This is a 25 watt panel, okay? These are surplus panels. They're cheapy, cheapy. Um, I can get these for $7 a piece, okay? Like this. 25 um, watts? Because nobody wants them because they're 25 watts. Yeah. You know, so they're just, they're, they're surplus and kind of like old technology, right? Yeah. So if I take this guy and I were to put this guy in here in the charging port right here, okay? Now I can create enough solar or harness enough power to charge this one guy to power eight lights and you can build this setup for under well, $15. And then let's say FTL, full truckload delivery to a place like Cambodia, say five bucks, five bucks a unit. 
to get it there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now what you've just done is you've taken a family of five off of kerosene. They're burning kerosene, they don't need to burn kerosene anymore because you just provided them light off of our garbage, plus $7 and $3 and whatever the cost of the battery, which we get for yeah. per pound for recycling. That will stop the family from breathing carcinogens indoors. Yeah. That will empower the family to actually use this USB. If I threw in one of my phones, yeah. a dual band phone, now you've literally just given them the power from our trash to be able to communicate. There's, yeah, huge impact to their health, uh, huge impact to their finances because 20% of their income is spent on the kerosene. <laughs> So now, oh, and that 20% that they save from the kerosene can now be spent on the minutes for the phone. Oh, so now you've just given them a free way to communicate. 96 homes off of one car. And if we didn't do this, what would we do with the pack? We would basically shred it, smelt it, and get commodity value for a couple hundred bucks. That doesn't even offset the cost of logistics. So basically you're charging companies to recycle and they don't want to be charged. So most of the times it ends up in landfills. <laughs> But now we can pay the company to do the right thing and the end benefit, the byproduct of our success is helping people. Helping people. And the environment's just a side thing. Yeah, right? it's a bonus on It's top. a bonus. Yeah. It's the byproduct of the byproduct. <laughs> Efficiency, that's the key here. And I really think that's, this would be fun to do. All we need to do is we need to create like- A box. A cool, yeah. yeah. Just a small little box and a small little 3D pack. 3D printed or, or maybe stuff like biodegradable thing, like a bamboo yep. thing. Easy. Easy, easy. And you could move 100,000 units like this to a place like Cambodia, rural areas, and get them all off the grid. But you'd have to have a lot of battery packs to do that. You'd have to have like oh, thousands of battery packs, yeah. right? Yeah. To, to create hundreds of thousands of units that you'd be able to. We only knew someone that had.